He was a hardworking man, but at the same time, he was a miserable, greedy, constant person who didn't want to know what generosity meant. The day before Christmas, Scrooge and his guard Bob Cratchit were working in the office. Scrooge was always counting his money while Bob was counting the minutes to go home to see his family. It's so cold in this office. But Mr. Scrooge said to hunt on the heater. He said to waste their money. Suddenly the front door opened. And Mr. Scrooge's nephew came inside. Mary Cruz is not cold. Christmas, Bob. Christmas is only a lie. You don't mean that I'm cold? Of course I mean that. Christmas is, a, is just an excuse not to work. Besides, what reason do you have to be happy? You're so poor. And Uncle, what reason do you have to be grumpy? You're so rich. Bob. You don't, don't get angry, Uncle. Why wouldn't I? I live in a crazy world with fools. Merry Christmas? What is Christmas? It's just a time to pay bills with money you don't have, where you see yourself a year older and not men at a a time where you buy gifts you can't afford. But, Uncle. Nephew, go celebrate Christmas your own way, and let me celebrate in my way. But, Uncle, Christmas is a time of forgiveness, love, and charity. It's a time where people should open their hearts to one another. And Christmas is the only day where people seem to get along just fine. So maybe Uncle, Christmas has a human of gold or silver coin, but it does good to me. That's why I say bless me Christmas. Wow, that was a wonderful speech. I wonder why you don't work for the government. Uncle, remember that tomorrow it's your wish that Christmas dinner with me and my family. You're always welcome. Thanks, but no. Have a nice day. Uncle, I'm sorry that you already took a decision, but I'm just in celebrating Christmas. So Merry Christmas. Have a nice day, a happy new year, and goodbye. Bob, have a Merry Christmas. A Merry Christmas to you, too. Then Mrs. Scrooge's nephew left the office. How about that? The front corner of the middle of the shower with the wife and kids talking about Merry Christmas. You must be crazy! Sure, I've been in the with all the lives and farmers all the way forward. I've been watching with more farmers who swept out all the ashes. And, well, it's good to have Mr. Scrooge. Fine, if your work is finished, you can go now. Sure, tomorrow's Christmas, and it is been time with the family. You like the day off, I suppose? Yes. After all, it is Christmas. F Christmas Bob, fine, take tomorrow. Be here early the next day. Yes, sir, Merry Christmas. Bah humbug. Scrooge opened the door and cracked and went home. <laughs> then Scrooge returned to the desk to finish his accounts. After a few hours, Scrooge closed his account books and proceeded to close the office. Okay. When he got home, he climbed in bed to his bedroom. Sat in a chair beside the fire to start to eat his supper. Suddenly he heard old bells ringing and strange and loud noise coming from the outside. Who's making that noise? I must have fallen asleep. But the strange, the strange will continue until he saw a ghost coming through the bedroom door. I must be dreaming. No, this is not a dream. I know you. You are Marley. What do you want from me? I want a lot from you. Do you see these chains? I'm chained to my sins. What sins? You are a hard worker and a good businessman. Businessman? I took advantage of people while I was alive. I never got to learn the value of love and charity. Now I'm still wandering the earth, unable to find peace. Hear me, Scrooge. I'm here tonight to warn you. You still have the opportunity to change, but if you don't, the same fate awaits you. Listen well, Scrooge. Be spiritual visit you. The first will arrive when the clock strikes one. Then the ghost left the room, floating through the window. Scrooge closed the window and went to bed, shaking in fear, and fell asleep. Here's what happened when the clock struck one. Who are you? The ghost took Scrooge through time to a small town, but Scrooge tried to remember. He then remembered the houses, the church, the river, the bridge, and the steeple. Look! They cannot hear us or see us. They are shadows in the past. Look! The school is not that empty. There is a little boy, alone, forgotten by his friends. I know him. Poor boy. Now, let's see how under Christmas. Then they arrived to a house. This house seems familiar. Oh! This is my house, where I grew up. Yes, it is. And do you recognize that little boy sitting alone reading? It's me, as a child, but why am I, why is he alone? You must know the answer. Because my parents were working. That is why my Christmas was always so sad and lonely. Take my hand. We don't have much time. No, I've seen enough. Go away. Don't torture me. Don't blame me. I told you to believe your shadows and the things that have been. Take me back! 
We have one more stop. Our time is running out.